Hello everyone, it's Dom here from Esports News UK. We've got something special this time, uh, and a special guest. We're going to talk about ageism in gaming, in streaming, in esports, and I'm joined by a streamer. Um, it's Layla, aka Twisted Humanoid. Uh, thanks for joining me. Thank you for Layla. having me. It's and uh, you know we 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 met uh, the other week, didn't we, at the um, ESI Film Festival. Yeah, and um, saw MZ win that. Um, some really good videos there, and we got chatting, and I thought it was really interesting this point you raised around ageism and um, in esports and streaming. And I feel like it's a bit of a taboo subject. It's not spoken about about that much, and I feel like it's an important point. So I guess before we jump into that, tell us a little bit about yourself and what you do in gaming. Okay, so. Um... So, I mean, I've always pretty much been a gamer. So, you know, um, I am 41, so I was pretty much there from almost the very beginning. Um, I started streaming two and a half years ago now. Uh, basically, my my son wanted to start streaming during 2020. It seemed like everybody was streaming, and I think that was the first time I'd actually encountered it. You know, uh, we, we started on Facebook, um, and then I discovered Twitch. Um, and uh, I just realized that by doing it with him, one, it was a really great way to kind of bond with him, but then also, I loved it because it kind of gave me a, a bit of an escape from the real world as well. Mm. So, um, so that's that's how my streaming side of things started. But you know, way before that. So I, I'm all I'm also a, a, an award-winning tech blogger. So I've actually worked with the likes of, you know, Xbox, PlayStation, you know, all of those people way back in kind of 2009, 2010. Um, you know, I kind of took part in round the tables for xbox um they did a mums round the table so I've, I've done loads of loads of stuff in 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 kind of the, the the tech base for gaming so uh so yeah it's always been a very prominent part of you know what i love and enjoy as hobbies but also sharing it sharing those hobbies with uh with everyone else as well and you're focused on because we're Esports News UK and we like to cover esports, you play Apex, right? Is that your game of choice? Do you follow the esports much or does it tend to be like a casual playing? So um, Apex is actually how I really got involved in the, the esports scene. I didn't, obviously I knew it was kind of round and abouts and all the rest of it, but um, you know, Apex, my son, he's a very, very good Apex player. Um, he's huge into it, watches all the YouTubers. Um, goes off and tries to do all the special moves that they do. Um, but, you know, we, we went to ALGS, uh, the second split, oh, nice. earlier on this year. I was there. Um, yeah, it was it was amazing. So that was at the Copper Box Arena in um, in East London. And, uh, I mean, we just, we just had the most memorable time. Like, it was in incredible. Uh, I didn't think you could kind of get much better than that. But... Uh, Come September, we we went to the ALGS finals, uh, and it was even more special for him there. You know, he was kind of sat with the Oxygen crew, and um, you know, he won he won a PlayStation controller at, at ALGS as well. Um, yeah, it was it was a very it, it, that's kind of what's really pulled us into esports, and I think you know it's Apex is just such a friendly community, so it's 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 been a great experience. That's the impression I've got from it, and I can see Nessie there. Uh, you've got a Nessie, right? Mm -hmm. So shout out to Hannah, who's helped me a lot with um, Apex content on Esports News UK. She educated me on Nessie and what that's all about, and all of that stuff is like a little mascot, isn't it, for the game? Yeah, um, oh, I have all the Nessies. Oh, do you? <laughs> I do. This one was uh, actually crocheted by my friend Callie. So, uh, so yeah, she's uh, she was handing them out at ALGS. That's really nice. Yeah, it's like a custom mm. one. So yeah. this this topic then, ageism, I, I guess as we jump into it, I will say I'm 38 now, recently turned uh, 38. I set up Esports News UK at 30. And even then at 30 and in my early 30s, I always felt a little bit older and maybe a little bit out of place. Some people will say, ah, don't be silly, Don. Because it, it, I've, I've, I've been talking to some people and I still feel like, 
I, I go to Insomnia Gaming Festival, I go to Epic Land, but I've been going to a lot of Insomnia Gaming Festivals over the years, interviewing mm-hmm. players, interviewing esports talent and you know just doing content there and I just feel like I get getting older and older and I've kind of said to myself I'm not sure if I want to be walking around doing that content when I get into my mid to late 40s I just can't see myself doing it mm-hmm. and I, some people have said to me ah oh, don't worry about it Dom yeah you, you can still do it but I just feel a bit out of place when I'm interviewing mm-hmm. people that are half my age so and I do think it's a um there is ageism here. Yeah, I do feel like I get, yeah. I, I might not get invited to certain things because oh, Dom's a boomer. There's the journalist thing as well, right? Hey, we don't want a journalist snooping <laughs> yeah. around. Yeah. Stay away, yeah. Dom. But I do, you know, there's something there, isn't there? What What is your general views on it? Yeah, I mean, well, firstly, if you enjoy esports, I don't see why you should stop in your mid to late forties, even into your fifties and what what have you. I think, you know. I, it's it's very much if that's what you enjoy but i do understand where you're coming from i definitely feel like i i, I feel like when i go to these events i'm very much the mum <laughs> like i am literally a mum but it it's it's one of those things where i think gaming is considered for young people mm. so you know your kids will game and i think especially once you become a mum now here is a thing as well like i do think that there is also not just a, an age thing but a, a male female thing so it's not unheard of for a dad to to, to game and play cod for example that's not really frowned upon it's mm. kind of quite normal for a dad to want to play i don't know world of warcraft or cod or something like that um but a mum <laughs> Uh, you know, it's it's kind of like, oh, well, that that's a bit weird. Why does your mum game? You know, what's wrong with her? Um, you know, my, my son at the moment is, has had people teasing him at school because they've come across my TikToks and they've mm. come across my, my Twitch channel. And I think deep down, these other kids are probably like, oh, that's actually quite cool, but my mum doesn't do that. I was going to say, it could be a slight jealousy thing. You know what kids yeah. are like. Yeah, but at the same time, I think as well, there is that taboo around being an older woman who, who is a mum, um, gaming, you know, it, it, it is, I, I don't know, I don't know, and outside of streaming, I don't know really any local mums who, who, who game, hmm. so it's a bit of a, it's a bit of a weird one, um, but you know, I love it and I enjoy it, and since... For a very, very long time, since the kind of late, two, around 2009, 2010, whenever I started my Girls and Gadgets website, I, I've always been a, a really big voice for w- women in tech. Mm. And so I've kind of taken that over, you know, into, into women in gaming as well. And, you know, it's just about educating people. Um, I've always kind of been slightly frowned upon by the other mums for having bright hair and, you know, wearing... Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle t-shirts and, hey, that's and cool. stuff like that. But it's who I am. And that's the thing. I don't really feel like you need to change any of that. I don't... Whilst they looked at me and thought, maybe I'm not overly educated and don't have a job, it's actually the complete opposite. Yeah, you know, yeah. I, I, I've always held down a, a full-time job. You know, I, I work in tech. I'm, you know, I, I work in the software testing side of, of tech. And I love it. So... You know, I just I I don't see why you can't have hold down a full time job and have gaming as a hobby at the same time. Yeah, I completely agree. And I think there's there will always be people out there that expect everyone to adhere to certain societal norms, mm. standards. You've got to fit in. You've got to do this. You've got to do that. Even if they don't think it. Even if they follow, mm. you know, uh, uh, out there artists you know and rock stars and whatever else really punk rock things mm. um they still expect you to conform in some kind of way i've always been a little bit of um i love punk rock growing up that's what i mm. fell into as a teenager because i could it was an outlet for me oh i could be a yeah. bit different i didn't need to follow the trendies as we called them back then but yeah. even now now that i'm 38 i still don't like yeah. to do I don't like to follow the the crowd too much, right? And I feel like it's it's good to be doing what you're doing through those that bit of pushback you'll get. Oh, why is your mum gaming? What this and that? And also, you know, if I turn this into an article, I would like to ask a few other people because when I think of mums and gaming, the first one I think of is Mama Benji Fishy. 
I don't know if you mm. follow Fortnite, but um, the, the mum of the pro gamer, Benji Fishy, and Fish. Now, yeah. she may some may say she's got a little bit of an advantage or a unique position because her son's mm-hmm. given her a bit of a, a platform as well. Was retweeted yeah. her a bit. Hey, you're Benji Fishy's mum. Like, yeah, you, yeah. you know. It, in a way, it's kind of like being a son or daughter of a, a pop star or a rock star, yeah. right? Being, being, being Kelly Osbourne, mm-hmm. for example. Would, would we know Kelly Osbourne if Ozzy Osbourne wasn't her dad? Maybe, yeah. maybe not. Um, but that's the thing with streaming right now, isn't it? You get popular streamers and, you know, all of a sudden, you know you know their whole family. I mean, look at the likes of Faze Rugg, you mm-hmm. know? They all have YouTube channels, like his entire family, you know? So, and obviously they have become bigger off the back of him being such a big YouTube star. Yeah. So, you know, I, I, I yeah, I, I see what you mean, but... Yeah. It's a tough one because on one hand, I feel like gaming is very inclusive or can be very mm-hmm. inclusive and open. And on the other hand, there are still things, you know, people will joke with me. Oh, you're such a boomer, Dom. Mm. Right. And they'll oh, joke. I get that a lot. Too. You know, and technically we're not boomers. Technically, mm-hmm. I think from what I understand, you you will be uh, probably late Gen X, early millennial. I, I'm an early yeah, millennial. I'm an early millennial. Regard myself. Yeah. Uh, millennial. Yeah. Yeah. We're, we're early millennials. My dad is a boomer. My dad's in his yeah. late sixties. He is a boomer, yeah. right? But this term has been <laughs> uh, latched onto and and thrown yeah. a, as a joke. You're the boomer of uh, you're a boomer of UK esports, Dom, mm-hmm. because you're twenty uh, ten to twenty years older than a lot of other people. So yeah. it, we're in this weird half and half. Where I feel like gaming is open, but then it, it's a bit unspoken with how this this ageism is. I, I just see it sometimes. Um, before I ask about examples of things. Yeah. You mentioned you play Apex Legends. Could we call you the UK Apex Legends, the mum of UK Apex Legends, maybe? Oh, I don't know. I, th- I think there are definitely much better mums out there um, that play Apex than me. But uh, Maybe some of the mums are the pro gamers as well, right? You I think, know what? Yeah. You know, I'm quite happy to be to, to be the mum that, hang, that, that, that kind of supports everybody else, you know. Um, it would, you know, go, going to ALGS, it was really nice to see... Um, what I loved about going there was the fact that it was in the UK and most of these people are all from like, you know, North America, Japan, all the, they've all come here. There was hard, I think there was, was it one or two teams that have got Brits in? Mm. So, you know, not very many. Um, and to see the whole, all the families just descend. Um, and it was, and it was, it was just such a nice, wholesome experience. Um, my son was actually sat behind it's Timmy's dad um, when he was sat with the oxygen guys at the final. I didn't get to sit with my son because they said <laughs> they saved him a seat with the the, uh, the mums and dads from oxygen because right. he's a huge oxygen fan. So, um, but yeah, he was he was sat behind it's Timmy's dad who uh, gave him an it's Timmy's dojo. Um, nice jersey. So, but and, and this is it. It's it's really nice, and I haven't really experienced it with other games because I do, I tend to find, although playing Apex as a as a woman in general, you do you get the odd person going, oh, you're a woman. It's like that's right. Well done. <laughs> um, amazing. And then sometimes if I'm playing with my son, they'll be like, oh my god, is that your mum? And it's like, yeah. yeah. Like it's it, it's 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 a bit bizarre, but um, you know. When you it's... look at the stats, you know it, it depends on how, what where you look at uh, how you look at um, you know gamers and um, d- different demographics. Mm-hmm. But in esports and especially like the pro playing level, it is still very mm-hmm. skewed heavily male to female. Yeah. I'd love to know what the the percentage is between male to female um, streamers. I think Twitch has released this data. I, I don't think it's yeah. I don't know. I want to say like seventy to thirty or so. So it's not it's not too bad, but there's still room to improve. But I think if you look at yeah. casual gamers, that is more of an even split, apparently. And in certain games as well, yeah. like I believe MMOs and other games have had more of an mm. even split, um, male to female, and so on. So maybe I don't call you the uh, yeah. UK Apex man, but I can call you a UK uh, Apex yeah. Legends man. But it's a lovely community. Yeah. I think Hannah, um, who did some content for me at the different uh, splits this year she introduced me to uh, a TSM pro player's mum when I was chatting for a bit and they'd mm. flown over it is a nice yeah. community vibe well, what, how, where do you see ageism then um, Leila because we, we were speaking before I hit record 
on this, yeah. you know, and you were telling me about how some people have treated others, treat them differently when they find out what their age is and so on. Are there any examples of <coughs> ageism that you see? I mean, I think it's, it, it's a funny one because obviously nobody wants to be ageist or racist or sexist or anything like that. So I think people do tiptoe around this, but, you know, I do... When you look at, um, like, PR campaigns, for example, they generally, you know, obviously not 100% of the time, but the majority of them will go to kind of younger mm. content creators. Um, and I guess maybe it's because they are kind of trying to appeal to, obviously, a younger audience to kind of go back to the mums and dads mm. to say, oh, can you get me this game or whatever, so-and-so plays it, and that... And that's fine. But equally, I do think there is a huge market out there for the older gamers, like like you and I, who still really enjoy gaming. There are loads of people that love gaming, but feel, again, feel like it's a bit taboo because it isn't really spoken about. Mm. And, you know, I just think at the end of the day, it's generally the mums and dads that, that go out and buy the games as well anyway <laughs> for their kids. So um, it would be really nice to see some more relatable campaigns. You know, whilst I do completely understand when putting out a Christmas ad, for example, yeah, you are probably going to get your, your kind of younger ones. But to be more kind of aware of, of other areas of, you know, the areas that you can target. And I do mm. think older gamers are definitely that. Funnily enough, whenever I have got into conversations with some mums um, and dads, it's really interesting. Sometimes they'll say, "Oh gosh, I, I really, I used to love like I used to love playing The Sims, or I used to love playing Animal Crossing, or I got Animal Crossing during lockdown." And it's just like you look at them and you think you are the least likely person that I thought that would play Animal Crossing, and you can see that they're reluctant to almost tell you that they bought the game in case of judgment or, or something you know um so it would be really nice to kind of see a, a bit more of an older demographic um targeted in in some of these these campaigns so yeah i, I agree as well it's it's like an unspoken thing when mm. i i'm trying to think of my own examples of ageism and it's it's, it's hard to think because you know, it, not being invited to something because you're old. I mean, you can only try and figure that out. And how how much would that be? You know, I'm an overthinker, yeah. so maybe some of my oh, thoughts same. are a little bit paranoid, right? Yeah. So I have to consider that that I could be doing that. It's hard to give examples because it's not really spoken about. And like you say, if the younger people are selected for campaigns, mm. who quantifies the older gamers and so on that are missing out? And yeah. um, I will say on those campaigns, I know UK, the, the UK games industry trade body, they've done a few campaigns mm -hmm. which have been like safety, you know, I think they're trying to target parents. Hey, make sure you're, uh, you're safe with your parental controls. You know, the Nintendo Switch is great. I can set how long my oldest son plays that. And then yeah. the, the buzzer goes off and all that stuff, the alarm goes off. And then I can extend it if I want to. Um, they've done a few campaigns, I think, with like fo former footballers. I have seem to remember Ian Wright. They did something with Ian Wright, and they did something with Rio Ferdinand. Rio Ferdinand's done some charities and things, I think, with young yeah. people. But I don't know how big those campaigns were, or uh, how well they did, because parents aren't going to be... You know, if I look at my wife, she's not like super connected on Twitter, mm -hmm. on social. She doesn't really want yeah. to be. She does Facebook a little bit. So how do you know how well that campaign has done if the people you're reaching aren't the kind of people that yeah. will retweet several times a day? Quite hard, isn't yeah. it, to, to quantify yeah. that? Okay, you can go through traditional media and TV and say, hey, we had however many uh, impressions on TV ads and so on. But it's a tough one. When I look at other older gamers as well, I know I mentioned Mama Benji Fishy. There's uh, Perks, who is a League mm. of Legends, um, I say, a fan of Cloud9, who... Mm -hmm. <laughs> shares the same gamer name as the pro player, Perks. Oh, right, okay. And she was getting tagged a lot a few years ago. People were tagging yeah. her, thinking they were tagging the real Perks, and she was replying, saying, please stop messaging, I don't know what you're talking about. And pros were finding it funny, retweeting her, saying, hey, this is funny. And then when she looked yeah. into it, she got into the game. And then the community accepted her. 
Now she's yeah. like a Cloud9 mega fan and she's she's doing esports in schools and things, in nice. her schools. And it's been such a great story. And then I see other ones like I think Intel did the Silver Surfers, I think they were called, or something mm. along those lines, the, the world's oldest CS Counter-Strike team. Okay, maybe it was yep. a bit of a PR bra- grab from Intel or whoever it was. Um, but, you know, we do have older gamers. It's just... I don't know if like as many young people care about those older games. When it's a gimmick, there's like I think there's like the Skyrim Nan or something. Like, yeah, well there's it? there's there's Cod Granny, isn't there? There there are a few there are a few like that. Yeah, no. And do you know what though? I as as I said, I I, I stream with my son. Hmm. Um and I wish that there was something some way to kind of express to other parents and other people uh, you know around how much joy that has brought me and how much closer to my son that's brought me which is why actually when I discovered that he was being teased at school like that that hit me quite hard I there were a lot of tears the other week because I thought oh my gosh like he must be so embarrassed I never wanted you to be ashamed of me I always wanted you to be proud of me and he bless him he said I am I am he said you know I I think I think you're awesome. Hmm. It's just really weird. Like loads of kids just keep coming up to me saying, I found your mum on TikTok, you know. Um, and I, I don't do anything dodgy on TikTok or anything. Is <laughs> You know, I I have, you know, I, I, I do some of the voiceover meme things or I'll do some like uh, tech talk hmm. bits and pieces or, you know, stuff like that. Um, but I've got a few different TikToks because one's my gaming, one's my personal one, and mm. one's a mum specific one. So I guess the mum specific one is more he probably doesn't want that to be his public, you know. But I mean, th- this is a thing, like we're living in a world with social media and I have been in the social media world since the beginning. So before I became Same. a software tester, I was actually a, a, a social media manager oh, so right. like way back way way like when i started my my website back in 2009 that's what i was doing i was a community manager for um a do-it-yourself website builder so back then it was pretty much just facebook instagram um twitter um but you know and obviously that's grown as time has gone on and actually you know you you were you were asking for examples around um kind of ageism so about so in 2009 2010 I was a lot younger <laughs> I was in my late 20s um and I and I used to go to PR events every other day with 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 my with my blog I was you know mobile phone things and gaming things and all, all sorts of things um so coming back to it because you know I've, I've recently tried to kind of start it up again because believe it or not the whole consumer tech reviews are still very male heavy so i you know it's Mm. that female take on tech this is pretty much still the same people there are a few new people but trying to get back onto that scene because the influencer scene has exploded everybody wants to be an influencer now so and this is where i think i'm now encountering more of an issue because i am older Mm. so i am not quite so shiny to these prs um which is a shame because, you know, I have all of this experience. I, in fact, I feel like I'm much better to work with now because I have the experience. You know, I've, I've worked with Microsoft and Nokia and Sony and all these really big brands. I am actually really well placed to work with these brands because I'd like to consider myself professional. Mm. Um, whereas, you, you know, every now and then you'll read a horror story about an influencer who, who's gone rogue for one reason or another because, you know, they want to make a name for themselves or what have you. So it is it, it is more, it is tough. I do feel like I'm having to hustle a lot harder than I had to, mm-hmm. say, 10, 12 years ago, you know? So, Isn't that ironic as well that, you know, the older you get, the more experience you get, arguably the better your job you get or maybe more efficient and so on. But mm-hmm. as you get older... Your looks change as, as well, and people yeah. may be judge may judge you differently. You know, if yeah, you go no, for a younger, no, straight out of uni, you know, uh, unless they're uh, you know, a real exception, they're not going to do a yeah. better job than someone who's ten, twenty years their senior in a role. No, and actually, I I know I know of streamers who don't divulge 
their age at all because they are slightly older maybe they're in their late 30s mid to late 30s but because they look a lot younger obviously the opportunities are, are there for them and i don't prs can't really say well how old are you do you know what i mean that's you can't really <laughs> well they say that. it's rude to ask a, a woman that question right yeah maybe it's... but it's just yeah i mean it's like cvs now you're not really supposed to put your age on a cv mm. you know apparently it's considered kind of taboo uh, or in a sense that i think you know even recruiters will take a date of birth off a cv if it's on there um obviously you can kind of probably work it out from their university and stuff but y you get what i'm saying like mm. it's it, age seems to be such a huge thing and it I, I feel like these days it's not so much of a problem as it necessarily used to be but for some reason it's still very much maybe even more so than before really you know i there have been so many redundancies in the in, in the last couple of years you know my older friends um have absolutely found it a lot harder um i've unfortunately been made redu redundant twice in the last five years and yeah. the first time i was made redundant if you look at the list of everybody who got made redundant they were all older people they right. kept all the young ones because yeah. i guess the older you get actually you probably get paid more money and, and the rest of it. So, you know, it's a, it's a real shame. Ageism is out there and I never thought I would be having this conversation. Mm. Um, but obviously we're having this conversation purely because I wrote a very, very honest tweet um, after a couple of glasses of wine. <laughs> um where the is other this week. going <laughs> no, that, was, that was that was why we 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 kind of got in contact wasn't it that that tweet has hit 100k impressions oh god and it was very very it was a very simple tweet just saying look you know i am an older i am an older gamer i would love to work with more brands you know please do you know and it was just really surprising the number of people i mean i off that tweet alone i probably got, i got over 800 follows off that tweet wow do you that know what I've got, Leia, I, I forgot about that we spoke about it didn't we at the, mm. the film festival yeah i'll have to when i do this embed that tweet because you yeah yeah you, you know, I'll, I'll see if i can find it because it's you've generated buzz and you've raised awareness yeah of that but the thing is i think with that tweet that was what made me realize this is this is something this is where i i can i can really stand out because mm. um <clears throat> so last week there was a mum in one of the facebook groups um facebook by the way is apparently what old people use i've, I've discovered apparently um as i've been told by multiple teenagers so I'm told, yeah. Um, <clears throat> yeah it definitely starts to make you feel old when people are telling you that facebook is is an old person social media um and there was a mum that posted something in our local group and they were saying, I've just bought my child, you know, a fire tablet. They want to play Roblox and, and, and games and stuff on it, you know, but I don't really know what I'm doing. Is there anybody out there that runs a course? Now, I've thought about this before because a lot of the mums at my son's school knew that I was kind of into my gaming. Mm. You know, a couple of months ago, I went around to my friend's house to go and fix his computer so that he could run valorant <laughs> do you know what i mean and actually it is i think there is a thing where there are lots of people uh, you know around our age that maybe have dropped gaming a lot earlier and actually don't know you know pc gaming or consoles and all the rest of it so um you know there's definitely a space there mm. to kind of really share my experience as a gaming mum as as a woman in tech um and and educate people because i think that's that's i think that's what this is i think finding people who are confident enough to voice up and say actually there is a problem with age in gaming gaming should have no age and that was mm. one of the biggest comments on that on that post was you know well you know i'm a 40 something i'm a 50 something gamer blah 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 are so many people out there it doesn't have to be taboo like this is no this this is this is our youth like you know everything that the kids have today are all i mean look at them playing mario i mean i remember when mario came out <laughs> Same. you know i my dad bought me um 
see, once upon a time, there wasn't really consoles as freely available as they are now, was there? My dad bought me like an Amstrad uh, Space Invaders. Do you remember the the kind of little box things? And yeah. they're, they're like um, almost like a mini arcade. Um, that's what I used to play on whenever I was whenever I was young. You know, mm. stuff like that. Um, until I got my my Game Boy and then my Super Nintendo. But oh, yeah, I don't think I got my Super Nintendo till I was about. 12, 13, so mm. I was a bit older as well, so, you know, but I'd always kind of, play, like, gamed prior to that anyway, you know, because we always had a computer in the house, because my dad worked in computers, so... Yeah. You've raised a couple of interesting points there, um, Leila, like, I know from your tweet, you said a lot of people responded saying, gaming should be for everyone, I'm 50, I'm 60, I'm 40, I'm whatever else, and yes, gaming is for everyone, but... And what we're talking about as well is the streamers, the people working in gaming, working in esports, those faces, those do, do brands want to hire those faces anymore? I've got no question. I've got no question that gaming is for everyone. You're playing it by yourself. But when you become personalities and also, like you say, hiring, you know, the employers take that into account now. I think there's this notion that if you're younger, you're hungrier. I've still got the yeah. same motivation I've had, if not more. I was going to say, I've probably yeah. got more so now because I feel like I've got more of a point to prove now that I'm older. Plus, I want to set a really good example for my for my kids. Mm. You know, I, I want them to see that if they work hard, um, you know, that they can they can do really well in life, you know, and mm. that things don't just get... I think we live in a world where everything's so disposable, mm. you know, Um you never had kind of your pound lands back in my day where you could go and pick up a Barbie for a quid, you know, it's, you know, gifts and stuff were for Christmas and birthdays, you know, it's, we live in a very different world and now everything is so online and digital and I don't know, there's the kind of ideals that they see, It it's, yeah, I, I don't know. It's difficult, isn't it? Layla, you just had a, yeah. a point there when you got to the word disposable, you froze I could still hear your audio, but then your oh, video okay. caught up and you went really far. So it's up to you if you oh, want right. to say that bit again. I can't remember from where you started what it now, what, but I can remember the point? word disposable. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I don't can't remember how you started it now. Then I might be able to do a way around that because when I do the video, I can cut to things as well. I'll cut to. Yeah. I could cut to another. I don't usually do many cuts, but I can cut no, to a shot no. there where you're talking about something. Yeah, no, that's fine. Um, I can't remember what it was now, but... <laughs> that's fine. We'll, we'll go back into it. Um, yeah. There was something else I was going to say. Uh, what was I going to say? Um, oh, damn, I can't remember what I was going to say now. But, yeah, I, I liked... I, I'm agreeing with pretty much everything you're saying. You know, it's... How do we... I guess, yeah, that's a question. How, how can we improve? How can we... Because this is hard, isn't it, to change mm -hmm. hundreds of employers... And I don't, I think, how do we improve? Improve or educate? I think that's the question here, isn't it? It's like how do we how do you educate these people around the fact that we can bring value and impact? Because I, I kind of feel like we've gone through I, I, and as corny as they are, I still think the best adverts were from when we were younger. Do you know what I mean? You, mm. I still find myself singing the jingles of of like old gaming and old old toy <laughs> adverts. Do you not? They pop into my I head. I don't know any anymore. They, well, they're, they're just not really there because we. I don't think that we consume TV in the same way as we used that's to. Right. You know, and I think that that's that's you know really important. And I think a lot of the time these days the we, we go back to kind of the if, if we're looking at adverts and 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 who they choose to be in like pr things it is younger people because that's they're going directly because they are they you know maybe an people. ad they're they're an ad on youtube mm. ads now is on youtube unless unless it's paid for mm. that's where I, I see ads now i don't i don't see them i don't watch excuse me i don't watch terrestrial tv that much anymore so you know, no. gosh, is terrestrial even a word anymore? Like, yeah, I know. Yeah, it's a bit of a strange like, one, isn't it? Oh, my son, whenever I told him we we used to only have four channels, he was like, what? He just can't, he can't process it. 
<laughs> Channel 5 launching with the Spice Girls. I that remember was that. huge. You know what? I remember sat there watching that countdown. Same. Oh my god, it was so it was such a um cuz I we didn't have Sky. Lots of kids at my school did have Sky, but same, same we here. didn't have Sky. So I did have just have one to four. You know, I'd sit and watch Noel Edmonds house party on a Saturday night and Mr. Blobby. you know, Bruce Brucey's generation game and all that kind. That that was my childhood. Um and so yeah, when when Channel 5 launched, it was like the best thing. I was going to say the best thing, best thing it since was sliced big. bread. It was yeah. a big thing for TV, wasn't it? You yeah. know. By the way, yeah. since you've talked about jingles and things, I've had the the Toys R Us advert, Toys the Christmas Us. ad. Toys it's R called Us. Toys R Us. <laughs> <laughs> Pop into my head. Anyway, I don't want us to become cliches here because no, people will be saying, fun. "Oh, look at this pair of boomers! Look, they're they're doing yeah. a thing on ageism, and now they're reminiscing about the past." But you know, zoomers but that so are watching good. this, sorry. No, but it's so good. Yeah, yeah, and and the zoomers to the zoomers watching this, you will have the same thing in twenty years, thirty years. I guarantee it. The stuff you're growing up now, you'll reminisce on, and then the children below you will think you're a bit silly or whatnot. Um, uh, something I wanted to say, uh, Leila, you mentioned about educating. Mm. I do think there's a there's something missing in this space where a, a, an average mum or dad. Where do they go for gaming advice? Because I every year, I'll get, every year I've had one the other day. I'll get messages from some of my friends and family members that don't know much about gaming, and they'll mm-hmm. say, "Oh, Dom, my son is turning twelve this year. He likes this, that, and the other. I want to get him a new game and surprise him. What should I get him?" And people ask me those questions. It's like you were saying mm-hmm. earlier. People lean on you for things. My next door neighbours yeah. knocked on the door the other day saying, "I'm sorry to bother you. I've got my phone stuck on." airplane mode I was, I was going to ring my daughter to come and all this way to come and turn it I was like you don't need to ring your daughter just I'll help with any phone yeah, computer yeah. issues you have you know I feel like that could be improved I, I feel like you know I've had friends that have worked in games retail shops and tried to advise mums and dads that game is an 18 you know yeah. really they shouldn't be playing that and some parents have had a go at them said I'll buy what I want for my son or yeah. daughter that's difficult yeah. as well some parents you know every parent is different right and some i yeah i think so because i what's really interesting is that my youngest i don't really have a huge problem with him playing cod but my eldest at my youngest age he just didn't have that kind of maturity to play it yeah yeah and i think sometimes Yes, there. Are, I mean, they're guidelines at the end of the day. It's not strictly you. Will, you know, it's not like you're going to go to prison if you let your twelve-year-old play an eighteen if game. If you've bought the game, it's perfectly legal. Is from I what mean, I understand that, it. That that's the thing. Like they can't buy it, but if you buy it for them, because um, it's like Apex. Apex is theoretically sixteen and over, but the majority of so many of their players are like, you know, around eight, nine, ten. You know, you look at um, is it Little Fredrickson or, or something? He's He's a, a kid in the US who's mm. like a, an apex predator. He he actually streams with his dad, um, you know, and he's 10. And he's yeah. probably one of the best players in the world. Um, and, and this is the thing, like, there is so much talent um, in gaming as well. And I think that's, I think that's the other thing that as parents, um, we're all kind of battling against, because it's like, how much time is too much time? Mm. Um, and I again, I, I, I put it down to it really depends on your child. So my son is very gifted at FPS games um, and there are people who have actively shown interest. He has played with like pro coaches. Oh, He's played great. with pro players. Um, he, I, I mean, seriously, the, the guys at Oxygen have really supported him That's so brilliant. much at, since we met them back in what was it april this year they've been incredible for him and they've really inspired him to really go for it now again there is a it's not just a to to, i think there's a huge taboo around gaming full stop it doesn't matter how old you are there's that whole thing of well you know if you game a lot then you're a bum you know yeah that was a sort of older perception that's changing a bit now i feel changing a bit but i i still think that there is an element there are still parents as like oh you know they're just going to veg veg out in front of games and stuff now i've said to my son i will support you and your dreams but you get your homework done yeah <laughs> and you know you will you will get up every morning you will be on time to school every morning you will make sure that your homework is done um 
and you know we don't compromise on 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 your education I'm, but i'm happy because you look at you look at some of these kids you know you look at zen for example in rocket league you know he's 16 years old he might be 17 now but he's he start they found him when he was about 14 i think 13 14 was when they he was discovered um and vitality brought him on because i think he, it's a bit younger for rocket league to be a pro i think it's 15 mm. um I think it's 17 with with apex so sure. you know you look at how much money that kid has already earned all it's because a minor. he so is he needs the support and everything yeah but his parents have been supportive he hasn't compromised on education or anything mm. with the right support from a parent your kids could could almost be paying for their you know their house deposit themselves you know um and i think if you if you have a gifted child when it comes to gaming or anything encouraging kids to to follow their passions and their dreams you know i think i think that's super super important and i will continue to support my son um you know and if it ever turns out that it's it's affecting like school or something then we'll have to relook at it but I he has found more inspiration in the Apex community than anywhere else publicly. I mean, he's they've been incredible. Um, so many people, the guys at Convergent, another another kind of Apex esports team who have been so great for him. Mm. Um, oh, I I could go on. There are so <laughs> many people. There are so many people. But you know, when it, it's almost it's weird. It's almost family like. But then you look at something, I know Valorant's very much kind of a big game at the moment, but it's also one of the main games that's talked about where people, where there's a lot of people talking poorly, you know? Yeah, there's um, a bit of toxicity, isn't there? And yeah, so very, on. very toxic. I mean, COD's renowned for being toxic. So it's there is toxicity in, in Apex. I think with any FPS, there will be. Mm. Um, but, you know, certainly from from kind of an esports perspective and, and being present there it's nothing but the most wholesome experience mm. so yeah and, and also haven't. you know us parents we provide another perspective talking about ageism and so on if you just hire young all the time you're never going to have that perspective of parents yeah. unless you know there are younger parents out there of course but you're yeah. more likely to have a varied perspective when i became a dad I remember my shift in perspective. It got me thinking about games in a different way. It got me thinking oh, about gosh, age yeah. ratings and this and that and the other. And you need that. You need a team with varied voices, genders, yeah. races, religions. You need, and, and ages as well. I think, mm -hmm. you know, when people talk about equality in esports yeah. and openness and inclusion, I feel like they forget about age a lot, actually. And that's oh, something that needs do. to change. I think they do because I feel like when you go to Insomnia or EGX or anywhere like that, they have their panels um, and they will have panels on all sorts of things. So, you know, the LGBTQ, um, you'll have it on, they'll have lots of like cosplay um, kind of panels. They'll have um, uh, Black Lives Matter panels and all the rest of it. But actually, where are the age ones? Mm. Because I kind of feel like we're slightly being left behind. I think there are lots of very passionate gamers out there um, who could... Some of our experiences, the kids may not have even heard of before. You yeah. know, I certainly when I look back at kind of my gaming days of whenever I played Street Fighter and Mortal Kombat and all the rest of it, you know, um, it, it was very different. It's like I, I watched a really interesting YouTube video recently, which was somebody who was, I think, late teens, early 20s, mm. played one of the old games back from back in the day. Um, and I think you, you had three lives and you could kind of obviously you could collect lives as you went along. But once you lost your last life, that was it. It was like it was literally game over. Um, anyway, they, they kind of it was it came up game over and they went to continue. And they're like, what? what i've just sat here for two hours and like you know was. But that was it that is that is how it was back in mm. our day and actually i i actually think that as annoying as it was because it, it was really annoying let's be honest if you I, there was a game it was the adams family on super nintendo <laughs> i've religiously played that and i'd got to the last level 
so many times. I've never actually completed it <laughs> to this day. I've not completed it because I couldn't get through that last level with my with the lives that I had left. Mm. Um, and but I actually I think I think there's an element of character building, you know. So because I think it's there's always this whole thing of like, oh well, you know, you can you can just continue, it's, and it, it kind of changes your attitude almost to life as well in that sense that there's always there's always a continue isn't there yeah um rather than well you just got to get good <laughs> that's it that's I mean? exactly it i was raised on Mega Man, right that was the yeah. first game i had mario but Mega Man was the game i played before mario and that was brutal mm. you could have yeah. you got passwords when you finished levels so you could write the passwords yeah. down even then i never finished the game properly i think Mega Man too i only went back and finished it so my advice to you for adam's uh, family, if you get a ROM for your yeah. PC and then play it on that, you can just mm. press a button to uh, save a state and then instantly reload. Or yeah. I don't think you can get it on the the Switch. There's a Super Nintendo on the Switch. I don't think Adam's Family is on that. I don't think it's on that... there. No, it was quite an obscure. One. I I had a few obscure games. There was that. There was Kevin Keegan's Football Manager. <laughs> <laughs> And um, Jurassic Park was another another one. Um, we did, so me and my dad used to sit, oh God, that game, that and Kevin Keegan. There were some nights where we would just get completely, like me and my dad would sit and game until like the early hours in the morning yeah. in like the summer holidays. And it was, it was, it was brilliant. Like they were some of the best nights, like, you know. Um, F-Zero and Doom for me and my dad. I don't yeah, know why it was yeah. those two games. We could just play those over and over. Even though F-Zero was single player. We could yeah. take it in turns and trying to beat each other's times and everything. Um, Layla, yeah. I can see. Speaking of being parents and and so on, I've got to pick my kids up in a minute. So, is there any is no there worries. anything else you'd like to add? I mean, we could always do another call after this and get more quotes. But yeah, um, I feel we've covered it pretty well. But yeah, anything else? Yeah, I think I think we pretty much have. I I just think it would just be really really nice, just for you know you know your brands and PRs and and people like. Twitch and Kick and all of those people to really start to recognise that older gamers have a, a quite a prominent place in this space as far as I'm concerned. Um, you know, people who like casters, um, even esports personalities, I, I don't really see why they have to be retiring at like 23, 24. Um, you know, it'd be nice to try and raise that profile um, and see more of us in that space like i say my tweet more than anything really kind of hit home mm. wow i'm not on my own 100 <laughs> percent. and i want to say on that note as well before we end we haven't even spoken about esports player age because there's ageism there that you know yeah. people expect pro players to retire in certain games in their mid mid to late 20s or you know yeah. sometimes even before mid 20s um, and in in other games, many pro, some pro players are proving those people wrong. And if you look at certain games, fighting games, for example, Tekken Street Fighter, mm. we've got people like Ryan Hart, uh, mm. Diego Umihara. I think they're in their. Correct me if I'm, I'm unless I'm mistaken. They're in their early forties now. They're still right. playing in tournaments. I think Ryan Hart. He does more. He's done other mm -hmm. stuff. He's worked at ESL. He but he's analysis now. It, still now he's putting out interesting tweets about animation cancels Street Fighter 6 is still a relatively new game he's figuring things out he's a real expert at his craft and has still been performing hi on there we go Hadouken uh, Hadouken I always um, always have my Street Fighter was was, was yeah my, my dad used to have a nightmare trying to get me off um, Street Fighter and, um, <laughs> and Mortal Kombat he's actually tripped the fuse he's purposely turned off the fuse in the house before oh my gosh to, to get me off because he didn't like the fighting for, yeah. game no yeah. because i needed to come down for dinner oh, and right. i kept saying i'll be down in a minute i'll be down in a minute and he one day he came up and he said if you don't yeah. get off your computer right now i'm going to flick the fuse yeah. um and i said just just let me finish this let me finish this and he yeah. walked up and he just flicked the Good fuse fix. oh no well the thing is though Lola, you could have paused the game back then now with fortnite and league of legends you can't pause oh well, you know no, yeah. So why um, didn't you like pause? The... Were you you were just so into the game? Um, yeah, I was just I just wanted to complete it. So I was a bit of a nightmare when it came to my gaming, and uh, I think my son has kind of picked that up a little bit. Um, my husband actually went in and just turned his PC off the other day in the middle of a rank match, and it was oh, no. it was like it was like World War Three. So mm, yeah, <laughs> you know. 
And and on that note, yeah, it's been great talking to you, uh, yeah, Layla. You for everyone watching, thanks for watching this. Please give Layla Twisted Humanoid a follow. Do some you know Apex streams and other bits and pieces. And with your your son sounds really talented in Apex, so I'll have to uh, jump into one of your streams and. Yeah. and check that out at some point but you know I want to hear from people as well on this I don't want this to just disappear into the ether I want people I'd love to hear people's views whether you're old young or in between what do you think about do you feel like there is an issue here because from zoomers watching this uh, uh teens or and in your 20s I'd like to hear from you around what you feel uh, do you feel I'm wrong what do you feel of Layla's views and older people as well I want to get your views because I know there are some people in 30s and 40s and beyond in, in UK sports as well that I talk to and it's, a, it's an important topic I feel like we need to talk about this more so thanks for chatting to me about this uh, Layla I appreciate your no views worries. and any other Thank parting you. words I know I've already said anything else but any other final thoughts no that's it really you great know. stuff well make sure everyone you give uh, Twisted Human Order to follow I've been Dom Sacco from Esports News UK thanks for watching and I hopefully see you all soon.